Gordon here in just a few here on our big program. And uh, Pastor Gordon will join us live here in just a few seconds. And, uh, of course, it's Skype, so we have to ring the group. I always love that about Skype. You've got to ring the group. So we will ring the group, and we will see what happens. Uh, we will get Pastor Carrie in here, and we will see uh, just exactly what the heck is going on here. So... Technology seems to be against us sometimes on this show, so I'm hoping that we can get Pastor Kerry in here, and uh, apparently something went wrong with trying to join the Skype call. I think it was because he decided to start a Skype call same time I started a Skype call. However, we have him now, and we have our great guest with us today. Pastor Kerry Gordon joins us here on our big program Enemies Within the Church. This is a heck of a uh, great project. Pastor Kerry, talk to us a little bit about this project, my friend. Everybody needs to see the movie. Uh, we spent three and a half years traveling around the United States. We were going to travel around the world, but then COVID hit. Uh, but we talked with, I think, some of the smartest, wisest people in the United States about uh, something that's going on in the church right now that has massive, massive implications for the future of the United States of America. So you don't have to be a Christian to understand that the way that Christianity moves to the left in the United States has a direct impact, ultimately politically, and then upon everyone that lives here. So it's a really important issue. Christianity is being hijacked by people who are not, um, they're not dedicated to the, the authority of the scriptures. They're sort of reinventing yep. Christianity and making it the way they want it to be. And as a Christian and as a pastor, I have to say no and, you know, sound the alarm and let people know that it's going on because it's happening all over the place. Well, we are seeing uh, clips of this of this great film as I chat with you for our TV viewers. Tell us a little bit about how you guys put this uh, put this film together, because it is it is an incredibly well done film. Did I lose you? Can you hear me? I've got you, my friend. I've got you, Pastor. T t tell us a little bit about the film because we're, we're seeing clips of it for our TV viewers uh, that are with us. Uh, how did you guys go about putting this film together? Well, for three and a half years, we went all over the United States and we sat down with people who had been professors in seminaries and Bible colleges. We spoke with pastors. We spoke with um you know, people that have come from that area that, that are dealing directly with this issue of basically a Marxist-based Christianity permeating the fabric of our educational system and churning out new pastors and churches across the United States that actually believe Jesus was a socialist. And um, uh, it, it was a, a lot of slam doors. Nobody wanted to talk to us for a while. And then Black Lives Matter erupted and lit a hundred American cities on fire and suddenly people are like, Oh, you know what? Maybe we need to sit down and, and reconsider <laughs> and talk. So, uh, tell me, tell me about the, the process of, of producing this and going on the road. And, uh, how did you make contact with some of the folks that, uh, that are in this film? Well, that's interesting. It was, it was very unique. We, we went to a lot of events and just basically introduced ourselves in hallways and said, hey, we're doing this movie and we saw you on Facebook or we read an article that you published or um, some of these people authored some books and they seem like they were kind of aware of what's going on. Once the word got out that, that we were doing an expose on a deviant movement within evangelicalism to basically help America shift to the left, we actually had a lot of people reach out to us and say, hey, I've got a story. I want you to know what happened to me. You guys are exactly right. Here's what happened. Um, uh, probably for every 100 people that we talked with, only about one half of one person was ever willing to go on camera. So everybody's kind of nervous. Everybody was scared. And a lot of people could see what was going on. But no one was talking about it. No one's bringing it up. No one was dealing with it. And so there was a lot of resistance. A lot of times people say, oh, I don't believe that. I don't think it's that bad. But then, like I said, when Black Lives Matter erupted during the COVID pandemic, 
all of a sudden people realized that we weren't making this up. There is a massive movement of Marxism in the United States, and it's not only taking over Congress, it's slowly taking over every church, one by one, every seminary, every Bible college, and young people, millennials, are gobbling this stuff up. They think Jesus was a socialist, and, you know, what this means for the future of this country should not be underestimated. This is really dangerous stuff. Another thing that happened, you know, you weren't allowed to use the communist word. It sounds like bomb throwing. Well, then all of a sudden, you know, you have a guy running for president openly saying, hey, I'm a communist. And so I think a lot of people are realizing that this is not conspiracy theory. This is actual facts on the ground. It's happening we got a real problem. We have to confront it. So hopefully everyone will go watch the movie. It's at enemieswithinthechurch.com. You can go there right now, stream it if you want to, or you can buy the DVD. I highly recommend it. You will not be disappointed. Fantastic. We have got a great guest with us today. Pastor Kerry Gordon is with us here on our big broadcast. He is amazing. He has put together this incredible, incredible project, Enemies Within the Church. So why do you think that this movie will uh, appeal to folks that, uh, that, that pick this up and, and watch it and share it with their friends and family? Well, everybody's noticing all of these new terms are being used. White privilege, critical race theory, intersectionality. All of a sudden, you've got a generation of people who said, I was born gay, even though science says that they weren't. And now the same group is saying, well, actually, we weren't born any particular gender at all. Gender is a myth. There is no gender. If you go to Facebook, I think last I heard there's 60 or 70 genders that you can select. <laughs> so it's like, trust wow. the science, don't trust the science. And they're talking on both sides of their mouth. And a lot of older people are thinking, what is white privilege? What are they talking about? You've got old ladies and old men who've never been anything but kind to everyone in their life being accused of racism. So... All of these terms are happening cisgendered and, and, and non-gendered. And, and you start to wonder, what is, what is all this chatter? What are all these terms that people are using? Well, we boil that down in the movie and explain who's coming up with all this glossary of terms and why are they doing it. And I think everybody will be really enlightened to the issues that we're facing as Americans, not only as Christians, but as Americans and how serious it is to the future. What kind of a country are we going to leave to our children and our grandchildren? That really is an issue. And so watching the movie will educate people on what's going on, but also we provide an action plan. Okay, so here's the problem. What are we going to do about it? We have solutions that we bring to the table, things that average, ordinary American people can do at home in the town where they live that will make a difference in the future of our country. Fantastic. Fantastic. Pastor Gary Gordon with us today. He joins us live here on our big program, talking a little bit about this incredible, incredible movie. So what's been some some feedback you've gotten on this? Because th this, this is an incredible, incredible film. A lot of people are emailing almost on a daily basis. We People reach out, they call the office, they, they go through a lot of work actually to try to find phone numbers and say thank you. A lot of people are, are saying, I thought I was all by myself. I felt like I was alone because people aren't talking about this. And it's so good to know someone's finally addressing this problem. So a lot of people are showing relief that someone is finally doing something about it. A lot of people are saying thank you. You know, of course, you have some people that are mad. It's the people that are wrong, and they don't like being exposed. But, you know, I think we're making all the exactly correct people angry, and I think that we're really encouraging all the right people all at the same time. So once you've got this out there, like, like, like you've got it, and, and it's, it's making waves and, any, and everything, are you planning a follow-up or anything like this? Well, next year, we're, we're in the process of booking events around the United States. We're going to go to major cities and have conferences and bring in a lot of people that will speak, uh, both in the political arena and in the Christian arena, and try to bring conservatives together and say, how can we do a better job of maintaining the freedoms that our forefathers gave us than what we've been doing. We really think that we have some unique solutions to bring to the table. Uh, one thing that we emphasize in the movie that I'd love to say to your audience is you've got to come to the realization 
that politics is not going to fix the United States. The United States has a sin problem. We have a moral problem. And the only thing that can fix that is the real gospel of the Bible. And a lot of people have lost track of the fact that the Constitution that we enjoy, that we, that we say we enjoy anyway, that's the direct result of the Pilgrim Code of Law. The first Constitution in the history of the world was basically church bylaws with an addendum on how to deal with you know, sewage problems and criminal yeah. problems. So we owe a debt of gratitude, whether you go to church or not, you owe a debt of gratitude to Christian thinkers and Christian theology for the existence of of constitutional republics around the world. And so our solutions are found in theological issues, not in political issues ultimately. Fantastic. Well, this is an incredible, incredible film. Uh, tell me about some of the different imagery and some of the different things that you guys used uh, with this film. How it was well, shot, everything like that. It's interesting that you bring that up because one of the one of the constant comments is even though this is a really heavy topic and and one of my friends said at about the middle of the movie he was tempted to turn it off because he was getting depressed but he he <laughs> held on and he got all the way to the end of the movie and the end the end of the movie will leave you with real hope and um, but but the imagery there's a lot of really beautiful shots. I mean, first of all, the movie's in 4K, which is really great quality. If you have a big screen, you'd love to see it that way. And we kind of start the movie out looking at all the things that, that we love about America. There's just a picture's worth a thousand words, a video's worth 10,000 words. We see beautiful things like the mountain ranges of the United States, the, our lakes, our forests, uh, the beautiful cities that we have. And you, you really get to think about all the things that we love about America, and we start the movie out with beautiful imagery like that so that when we get into the hard topics, you kind of realize what we're fighting for. America's worth fighting for. We love this country. We love the church. We've got something rare and precious. We need to fight to preserve it and not allow it to be destroyed because of young people that don't understand the difference between um, free markets and socialist ideals. And um, it's really alarming right now. Like 58, 59 percent of millennials actually have said that they want communism or socialism in the United States. And that's really scary because millennials are able to vote now. Right. So we've got to deal with the issues. Why do we want to stay a free market society? Why do we think liberty is important? And what's what is threatening that? The movie answers those questions. And so please go see it. Enemies within the church dot com. So uh, where, where do you see, I, I, I guess, what, what, are, what are some of the goals for this film? When, when, when you guys set to make this film, what was some of the goals that you guys wanted to make sure you, you got accomplished? Well, the first thing is just to point out what's going on. Because a lot of people live, you know, that's part of the wonder of America is you get to live with reasonable freedom, you have your home, you have your church maybe that you go to, and I, I kind of say this teasingly, but people that go to church every week live in a happy bubble filled with praise and worship music, and they're just very happy people going about their business. Americans kind of mind their own business, and especially conservatives, they're just quiet, and they just live life, and they don't want to be bothered. And, and But the reality is outside that bubble, when you start to look at the large, epic view the existential problems facing America right now, you realize that it's all threatened and we need to get outside of our bubble and deal with the problems before they become unstoppable. So one of our goals is just to bring the information to the table and say, we have serious problems and all of us, this is all hands on deck. We've all got to address these problems now before it gets out of control. The second goal is we want people that have been a part of the problem to repent and say, I contributed to the mess, I'm sorry, I'm changing how I do things in the future. We want people to repent, we want people to go back to church. We want people to go to churches that are preaching the gospel correctly. We need the church, America needs Christianity, and we want people to, to, to see those things, and then we have an action plan of things we can do to preserve the freedom that God's given us in America. Fantastic. Well, one of the things that I, I find just insane about <laughs> the way uh because like you're you're a fantastic religious leader just sitting here listening to you 
Uh, we've been watching bits and pieces of, of, of the trailer here for the film. You get it. You're, you're not one of these guys that's out here trying to make money off religion. You, you've got this movie. You've got done some incredible things. Um, how do we separate from folks that are not like you? Because I think that's one of the problems that religion seems to be having nowadays is that there's too many people that look at these look at these some of these men and women and they're like, how do I separate the the good people like Pastor Kerry from some of these con men? Yeah. How, how do we do this, Pastor? Well, that, that's actually that's one of the things that the movie helps people with. At the end of the movie, our director says we're developing a, a new um, a new web page called Wokipedia. So you <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> you to go there and find out, you know, who are the trustworthy ministers and who are the ministers that have been compromised by progressive Christianity and wokeism that's antithetical to the scripture. It's not showing any integrity historically in orthodox teaching of real Christianity. These guys are reinventing a new religion. They're overlaying it with a glossary of Christian sounding terms. They quote Bible verses to you, but they're leftists. They're, they're not being honest about what I teach. And so Wikipedia will help with that. That's awesome. That's awesome. We have got a great guest with us today. Pastor Kerry joins us here on our broadcast. Um, one of the things that I, I would love to get your thoughts on before we let you go today is this, this big debate that is coming up with the uh, abortion situation uh, that is going on with the Supreme Court. One of the things that I I have a huge issue with abortion. <laughs> I think that that is, you know, un, un, unless there's, you know, unless you just can't get out of it, I think abortion is wrong. The thing yes. that I don't understand, Pastor, is, and, and this is on both sides of the coin, whether it's Republicans, Democrats, what have you. One of the things I find so strange about the abortion issue is that there's a lot of folks that, oh, my God, we've got to get rid of abortion. Oh, my God, abortion. But then when the kids get here, we don't want to help the parents and we don't want to help them really do anything. So then they get thrown into a system. And then there's all these people that are in the system that they're not being adopted or, or taken care of. As a religious leader, how do we go about fixing all this crap? <laughs> well, that's a, I mean, honestly, the, the biggest problem, the biggest impedance for adoption and, you know, dealing with foster care, yeah. the biggest hindrance is the government. Yes. I have all the time say, I, we're trying to adopt kids and the government's making it hard. It, it's, it goes back to Ronald Reagan. He was so right when he said the scariest thing you'll ever hear is, hi, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. <laughs> and yes. it's probably, the government is actually, they're getting involved in the, in the adoption services across the United States, and they're making it difficult for Christian people who live by the Bible to adopt children and to get, give foster care to children because they believe biblical things that are not politically correct. So yeah. our government is becoming hostile against its own founding thinking. <laughs> it's amazing and, uh, to me. It causes so many troubles. And then when people want to adopt a child, it might cost up to $50,000. And a lot of adults are yeah. just... They, they, they can't have kids, and they want to adopt children so badly, and then the, it's cost prohibitive, whereas you can get an abortion for free. Yeah. So I think one of the big obstacles that actually is hindering this whole issue is not only the government that's allowing abortion, it's the government hindering people from being able to adopt and get involved in the foster care system. Yeah. Well, Pastor, you are just a one-in-a-million kind of guy. Because <laughs> I've talked to religious leaders all over the place on this program and other programs, and they just don't get it like you do. So w whatever you're doing, keep it up, my friend. Well, thank you. I really appreciate an opportunity to talk to you and your audience. Again, I think everyone, every American 
has interest in seeing the documentary that that we've made. And you're right. You touched on this. Just so everybody knows, I didn't get paid one dollar to do this movie. Yeah. And I sure didn't make it because I wanted to make more friends. I promise. <laughs> have to have better security around here after making this movie but enemies within the church.com you can order a dvd and hopefully you can get it by christmas or you can stream it right now on the website watch it bring your family and your friends together and let's talk about what's wrong with the country and how we can fix it well you have hit this on the head my friend i really appreciate you making time for us today thanks for coming on our program and uh, good luck with everything and i will talk to you soon thank you pastor Thank you very much. God bless. Appreciate it, my friend. There he goes. That is Pastor Kerry Gordon. He joins us today here on our big program, and that about wraps it up here from our big broadcast. And we will inevitably see you next time.